Chris and Larry family. Um, I'm often asked how we prepare things on our homestead. And one of the things that we do a lot of prep work for, um, which I do have to still store by because I don't quite make enough every season, is a bone broth or a broth that's been put together. So thankfully, my dad smoked a turkey yesterday. So we are going to be making some turkey broth and getting that together so that we can build a base off of or for a soup that we're making. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just cutting up some celery. That's all I'm doing. I'm just, just roughly chopping big chunks of celery. I've already chopped up carrots and it's just really roughly chopped. I've got my big stock pot. Now I only use this pot for making soups. And yes, I make this much soup, especially when I know all the kids are coming over or, you know, to feed Berlin. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my vegetables in here. I'm gonna go ahead. Really, what are you doing? He smells turkey. He's like, yay, turkey. Let me wash my hands here. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got my carcass. This is what's left over from what we ate yesterday. This is the bone part of it. Now we smoked this turkey, so it's got this amazing aroma to it. Well, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and break this apart, and that piece is okay. Any of my bigger pieces, that's actually pretty good. You can actually cut this. I have my kitchen shears out just in case, and this is the best thing to use when you are putting together a turkey carcass or a chicken carcass. Now, this will be okay. Now, there's quite a bit of meat on here, so we're gonna pull this meat off after this whole thing boils. All right, I'm gonna chop up a red onion. and pull this apart here. Just kind of get this peel off. Now you could theoretically throw the peels in there too if you wanted to. I don't care for what it flavors like. But we're gonna use one onion here. And it, again, rough chops. We're not gonna do anything major. I'm just taking the the root side off of it. We're doing big chunks. This is gonna boil down for the flavoring in here, as well as the nutrients. But in the end, I just want the liquid. Okay. Now, as often as I make turkey or um, chicken, if I do chicken with bone, or even some of the different beef dishes, I do keep all my bones and I normally throw them in the freezer if I'm not gonna use them right away. I chop smaller chunks and into the freezer. And that way I can go ahead and use those later. Now I also want to go ahead and put some different herbs in. Now we're gonna do some bay leaves and these are some older bay leaves and we're this is why we take these back out. But I'm gonna throw two bay leaves or I guess it's two and a half there in there as well as some peppercorn. And I'm gonna just take, let's see here, just a little tablespoon worth here. Oh my, that's all twisted in there. Is. Now I like peppercorn, so my tablespoon doesn't fit in my container, so we'll do two of the half tablespoons in here. And these, again, are just for flavor. Now I'm gonna walk out to the garden real quick, chop some parsley, and I'll be right. Okay, so I just went out to my herb garden and popped this off. I got a little surprised. There was a couple butterfly caterpillars on um, some of the branches, so I left them alone. It's end of season here, so they'll eat what they want, but I got what I needed here. We're gonna throw this in the pot as well. Now, last but not least, we're gonna put some garlic in here. 
And then I'm gonna fill this all the way up with cold water, put it on an ice stove, and let it simmer for about two and a half or three hours. That juice that's uh, being made in this is what I want to use for my next soup batch, and then I'll put some of that in the freezer. I'm just gonna break up these onions just a hair more. Now there's enough meat on these carcasses here and you can see there's still meat on that. And that'll get into my food. Now once I boil this down again, I'm gonna pull all that meat out and it's actually going to go into my dish. Now I've also got some skins in here because this was a carcass that was smoked, it's gonna have that amazing flavor on the skins. So I'm gonna keep that for my soup dish. What I love about making my own soup stock is that I know, for instance, this was one of our farm turkeys. So I know how that turkey lived. I know what they ate. I know all that good stuff. And this meat I know is great meat. I mean, we've already eaten off of this. This was the leftovers. And that's the best part. You can lose, use leftover chicken. You can use any bones that you've got that you're cutting out of things. A lot of times I will keep beef bones. Before we cook, I'll cut them out of our meat and I have a bag in the freezer. My dogs either get those or I use them for bone broth. We use a lot of bone broth in this house because we make soup two or three times a week in the winter time. And then we keep the, the broth for later. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up with water and get this boiling. Okay, so Grayson's gonna dump the last eight cups of water in here. So we filled our stock pot, so this has got Oh, about 40 cups of water on top of the carcass. So go ahead and dump that in, Grayson. And we're gonna let this boil and we'll check in on it. We're gonna let it simmer, I should say, not necessarily boil. So what this is gonna do is as it's cooking down all the nutrients and all the goodies and all the fats and all of the yummy bone broth and all that are gonna start to form in here. So we'll check on it over the next three hours and we'll let you see what it looks like. All right, so it's one hour into our simmering. I turned the heat down just a little bit because it is a little bit, um, it was boiling a little too much for my liking. So we're gonna go ahead and do this for another hour and then I will add eight more cups of water in and we'll do it for another 30 minutes. This is what it's looking like. You can see it's nice and brown from that smoky, smoky um, skins that I put in there, but it's looking nice and tasty. Okay, so it's been two and a half hours. We've got our soup broth all nice and cooked down. We're gonna go ahead and put some cheesecloth here in our jars. I've got some jars here that I don't use for canning. These are half gallon and they're a different shape than my normal ones. So we're gonna go ahead and put some cheesecloth in the top of this and drain down soup into the jars. Okay, I use cheesecloth for a lot of different things. Um, I use it obviously for draining cheese, but this is a great way to drain out some of the different items that you're using. So what you wanna do, it comes rolled up and you want to kind of spread this apart. I wanna make sure that I can get everything drained out. I'm gonna fold this in half again here and stick this on in here. Now I'm using my soup ladle and this takes a long time. I could put it in a strainer and, and do it that way, but I prefer this method only because I can watch it fill in the jar. Um, I can watch what goes in and make sure that everything gets drained appropriately. And this just smells absolutely delicious because we used a smoked turkey. Up there. Because we used a smoked turkey, you can smell the smokiness from the, what was in the meat. Now, I did have peppercorns and other things in there. Um, and those are all draining through this this cheesecloth, you can see it collecting on the top. Mm. 
Now, when you have broth, it's all up to you whether you want to use those vegetables that you had in there and mash them down and put them into um, like your morning smoothies. You can use those, the veggies that you've cooked down in this for that. Like I said, I like to do it this way because there's a big onion piece and it's not going through. There may be some smaller chunks going through and I'm totally okay with that. Okay, I have two full gallons of broth here. Let me show you. Point it this way so you can see. And these are beautiful. Like I said, gorgeous, golden. The cheesecloth caught anything that was coming in. But I've got all of these. Now these will be used this week sometime in my household to make soup and then we will freeze dry or freeze the soup. Now the rest of the innards here, I'm gonna pull out. I've got a tray over here to catch the juice and the rest of the juice is going to go into and be drained through a strainer into my soup pot because we are making soup tonight for dinner. So we ended up with about two and a half gallons. So all I have left in here are the vegetables. And this pot, my soup pot, is about half full. So we'll be using that tonight on our soup dish. So watch for our video tomorrow. And that will be the soup that we're making for soup timber. So you guys, very easy to make your broth now. What you wanna do is if you're not going to can this and go through the whole process, which I normally freeze my broth, um, if you're going to use it up, you can leave it in jars. If you're going to freeze it, I would highly advise putting it into Ziploc bags that you can go ahead and freeze flat. If you put it in the jars, your jars um, could possibly crack. Um, if you put it in the freezer in the jars. So that's one thing to think about. Um, like I said, we'll be doing soup this week and then freezing the soup out using our own stock. So I hope you guys have a blessed day and we will see you on the next video. Bye for now.